I'm visiting with Ruth McDivitt. She is a tremendous star in the absence of a cello that I just saw tonight, and you were so delightful, and it seems like that I've known you all my life, and you, the way you uh, presented Irma, Emma Littlewood was just tremendous. Why, thank you very much. And maybe the reason you feel that you've seen me and known me in so many things is because uh, there's a certain identification that people make with uh, my characters as a rule. <laughs> well, you certainly do a beautiful job. You know, you've done quite a lot of television. Uh, maybe yes. for the sake of our audience, when they meet you personally like this, they, they say, well, now, where have I seen her before? Could you uh, refresh our memory of that? Well, I haven't done as much television in the last two years because I've been identified with this play for so long now, you see. But the last things that I did on live on television were uh, two starring roles on Hitchcock things. Hitchcock presents it about a year ago. One of them I get re repercussions from frequently. It's one where I was starred with Ronnie McDowell. It was a very charming and amusing one. And then I can't remember the name of the other one, but it was just a few weeks before that. Then I have done, I've been on practically every well, soap opera and every big dramatic show at night, on, in the East particularly, and I fly out frequently to Hollywood movies. And I just did a pilot for a new series, which will probably go on in the fall. Good. Who's the pilot with? Uh, Anne Sheridan will be the big star, and I will be the co-star. Well, you certainly, you'll be the big star. Oh, no. Turner, the no, I don't think Weren't so. Weren't you in Mr. Peepers? Yes, I was Mom, Mom Peepers. I was the original Mom Peepers. When did you start? Uh, it seems like I read somewhere about you that you didn't start into acting until quite late. That's very true. I didn't. I, well, I'll just put it this way. I didn't start acting until I was over 40. Now, we won't say how many right. years ago that no was. No need to. No need to. <laughs> but I've had a very active career, and uh, I'm always glad to say this because so many women seem to feel that when they reach that age, in my case, my husband had died, and my family was gone, most of them, and nobody seemed to need me particularly, but I started out and found an entirely new career for myself. Well, I'm certainly glad you struck out and found it because... Uh, <laughs> well, I am too. This play, The Absence of a Cello, is uh, the title I find a bit misleading. Well... Uh, from the standpoint that uh, unless you know a little bit about it, you don't really know what to expect, so you're a little afraid of it. I know, but then after all, well, if you're going to take titles apart, uh, who's afraid of Virginia Woolf? You know, I mean, it's misleading too. And all, all plays, could, some of them could be accused of that. I bet you enjoy this play, though, don't you? Very much. Very much indeed. Uh, it was sent to me originally about three years ago when I was in Europe doing a picture. And I fell in love with the play immediately. And I said, oh, this I must do. And it has been such fun to work with it from the beginning. You know, to see a play unfold, find out what the people playing in it do with their characters and what the director does with the overall play. It's a very interesting thing. Do you have children, Ruth? None of my own. I have uh, three stepchildren. Uh, some of whom are almost as old as I am, <laughs> and uh, I have one foster son, quite a young man, to whom I'm quite devoted. Well, I'm sure so. they're all real proud of you. Oh, I guess they are. <laughs> I, ha I have so many step-grandchildren, I have a very amusing story I can tell about one of those. Would you like to hear it? Love to. Well, uh, I had given him a trip to New York a few years ago as a graduation present when he graduated from high school. And while he was there one day, my, uh, what we call your service, you know, which calls you and tells you about uh, dates and things that you're going to do, called to give me one of the dates for one of my daytime soap operas, which was coming up. And so I just made a note of it and thought nothing of it. And the young boy, who was about 16, my grandson, said, well, what was it, Grandma Rouge? They always call me Grandma Rouge. And I said, oh, it's just something I'm going to do. And he said, but you must tell me. And I said, oh, it's not important, Kale. And he said, well, but you don't understand, Grandma. I'll be at my girl's house, and I'll casually turn on the television. I'll say, why, there's my grandmother. <laughs> Which
which I think is a lovely oh, thing. Isn't it? Well, this is uh, part of the thrill of actually being a star, isn't it? Yes, it is. I don't have to be a star. I mean to say I am starred in this play. I've been starred in a number of other things, and I'm always starred on television as well. But uh, just the doing of the thing, to me, is the thrill. I like it. Well, you can tell I enjoy what I'm doing on stage. That's so I enjoy true. it very much. And your voice carries, even in the auditorium here at Tulsa. It just really carries. And yet it's a very thin... Right. I was amazed. What I call a scrawny voice. I, I was amazed. Really? We'll have a chance to see you in Oklahoma City this coming Friday night, so oh, we're good. really... I know we're going there. Is it Friday night with us? It's Friday night. But I've forgotten just which day. Well, good, we'll then I'll see you there again. Ruth McDivitt. Mm -hmm. And you'll get more, oh, well, I see, because I won't be able to do any publicity in that town where we're, we're scooting. We're coming in from uh, Dallas, I expect. I have a man here that is certainly uh, well-known all over the world. He's played so many, many different parts, Mr. Hans Conry, and it's a delight to meet delight you. To me, I'm delighted to be here. To have seen you in this absence of a cello. Uh, the title in itself, as I mentioned to Ruth a few minutes ago, is... Uh, a little misleading in a sense. It's not misleading, it, it's difficult to understand. It's incomprehensible. We know what name we have, but you see, this was a success in Broadway, and you're stuck with the name of a play. We wanted to rename it, actually, and then we had long conferences about it and decided we'd better hold on to the play that uh, there's a title that got the good reviews in New York. Well, you know, after the first 10 minutes, you know why it's named that. Yes, it's very, <laughs> but it's very a difficult, uh, frankly, we are in a commercial business, and absence of a cello is not necessarily a box office name. Right. But your name is, of course. Well, and, you're uh, very kind. We are We've really been very fortunate. Excited. Business has been good. Uh, the play itself, it seems like it's a, a real delight for you to do. You just well, uh, if we have, as we had tonight, uh, a very, very receptive audience, it is a great pleasure. Occasionally, not often, but we have uh, found situations where you mark time until the curtain falls. Well, you know, I'm sure my audience would be uh, displeased with me if I didn't mention your portrayals on the uh, Danny Thomas shows. <laughs> and they are. this was such a masterful job. Uh, Danny's not doing that series anymore. No, no, the show's not. been canceled. Of course, it is being replayed time Oh, time Lord again. knows, <laughs> on and on and on and on. Uh, were you close friends to Danny? Or well, when you were working that closely for 11 years, you are bound to make some uh, uh, attempt at camaraderie, and he's a very wonderful man, a very easy man for him to work. Well, so and we had a warm <laughs> rapport. Someone told me when I told him I was coming over to interview you, they said, well, how old is he? And I said, well, I would say he's in his early 40s. Well, no. Seriously. Oh, charming. <laughs> yeah, you know. And they said, well, goodness, on the Danny Thomas show, he looked like he was in his 60s. It was supposed to be about, uh, Tanoos was supposed to be about 75, you know, but a very vital 75. But your makeup was great. We had false nose and padding right, and false right. hair and everything. I hear that you're going to be... Uh, uh, busy on this play for some time to come. How much we are going to travel to 65 cities and 161 performances and we'll be out till June the 11th. I hear you never never seem to tire of staying busy and uh, working all the time. Well, I'm very fortunate. I keep working. Well, that's wonderful. Actors desire that activity. You don't activity. have to mad in the paper. <laughs> no. Uh, you mean at liberty, the old ad at liberty? Yeah. Snappy dresser on and off. I am no boozer nor chaser. My price is low as I expect to be out all season. Well, uh, very good. There used to be ads like that, you know. Well, you know, a lot of people associate you with Shakespeare. Uh, I don't know that any Shakespeareans associate you with it. I've done a good deal of it, and, uh, but that, I'm afraid, was some years back. But These last years, I've been a popular comedian. And I think that this has been the, uh, the turn from the Shakespeare into the comedian has really uh, helped you in the comedian line because people, it's certain to people who do not understand or know Shakespeare, it's a relief to Well, I to failed in that direction. <laughs> Let's put that, it that you way. are so human and uh, portray well. life as it is. Uh, you know, an actor of necessity must pretty much do what his audience expects of him to do. And I have found that I am more readily saleable uh, doing light comedies. Well, you, uh, are you German by chance? No, not by chance. My father was an Austrian. <laughs> by intention. My father was an Austrian. He's a South German. I'm an American. But uh, how many German roles have you played? Do you have any Well, uh, you are not old enough to remember a naturally slender young man with a full head of chestnut hair that wore every possible Nazi uniform during the, uh, the war, the early part of the war, before I put on a brown uniform and went overseas myself in our army. 
was, this was in the, when did you start in motion pictures, Sonny? 38. Well, that, goodness, I'm practically as old as you You remember 1938, it's a good year. You bet. In fact, uh, I wanted to know if you were going to do any movies in the near future. I can't tell you nothing, because this is booked through. I have no idea what I'll do. Ordinarily in the fall, I go home to do uh, some tell not only to see my wife and kid children, but... Uh, Thanks so much, Hans Conried, and it's been a real pleasure and Thanks. a wonderful delight seeing you in absence of a cello.